right, we're going to take a look at functions today and um, what makes something a function or what makes it not a function. So I'm going to start by looking at candy. I can't function without candy. So let's pretend this shape over here on the left is a vending machine. And let's create a map of the candy. So if I press number one, we're going to draw an arrow from the number one to which candy it represented. So if I press one, it was a Hershey bar. So I'm going to draw an arrow from number one to the Hershey bar. Same thing for number two was Reese's. So I'm going to draw a line number two down to the Reese's. Three Snickers. Excuse my red lines that are not disappearing. Three is a Snickers. Four was Skittles. All right, number five is Snickers again. And lastly, number six is Starburst. So even though on this vending machine, I had two buttons that created Snickers, notice though on this vending machine, every button only went to one type of candy. So like number one only went to Hershey's, number two only went to Reese's, three and four went to Snickers, but number three, if I press three, it didn't go to Snickers and another one. It just went to Snickers. So each button correlated or matched up with one type of candy. So our candy machine, it functions properly because for each input value, there was one and only one output value. So every time I input a number, a button, one, two, three, four, five, six, I only got one output, which was the candy bar. But if I looked at this vending machine and I pressed the buttons, what do you notice about it? Well, if I press number one, I got a Snickers. But what happens if I press number two? If I press two, I got two for the price of one because it gave me Skittles and Reese's. So this vending machine, although you may like it because it puts out more candy, does not work properly because when I press number two, it gave me two um, options instead of one. Therefore, this one does not function properly. So a function is a dependency relation between two variables or quantities. So in this case, if I pressed one, I only got one result. Um, so a function only has one output for each value you input. So again, whatever number I pressed, I only got one type of candy back. We have one dependent value, which is your Y, and one independent value, which is your X. This should um, relate back even to sixth grade for independent and dependent. So instead of candy bars, I could replace everything with a number. So in this case, instead of Skittles and Hershey, Snickers and so on, I just replaced it one, two, three, four. This is called a mapping. And um, this does relate a function because for every one line drawn from say the X side versus the Y, for every one X, there was only one output. It only matched up with one number on my Y. And these also kind of match, they make coordinates. So if this is X and this is Y, well, my coordinate X is one and it matches up to a two. So that means Y is a two. When X is two, it matched up to five. Y is five and so on. So I can actually graph these as well. So right here, does this mapping represent a function? What I like to do is focus on my X side and take a look. Do any of those numbers have more than one line coming out of them? 
And the answer is yes. If I look at number four, notice it has two lines popping out of it. So is this a function? No. And we can say because the input, the x, has two outputs. It has two numbers from it. So my x repeats. When we're looking at functions, x can never, ever repeat. So is this table a function? Same thing. Look at your x's. Do any of your x's here repeat? They do not. Even though I see some of the same numbers, like 1, 1, 4, and 4, one's positive, one's negative, so my x's do not repeat. So yes, this is a function. So now let's take those numbers and let's put them in a calculator. So in order to put them in a calculator, we're going to come over here um, and let me make this smaller so we can see our table. So in our calculator, there's a few steps. First of all, we're going to put um, to where when I go to graph it, it's going to graph all the little numbers, all these coordinates on my graph. So it's going to look a lot like a scatter plot. So go ahead and hit second, y equals, and where it says number one, press one or click enter, um, whichever works better for you. And make sure this cursor where it's blinking is on top of the on button and hit enter because we want to make sure that the first stat plot is, is turned on so it shows up on my graph. Then I'm going to hit the button that says stat, which is two to the right of the green one stat and we're going to go to edit so hit one or hit en or select enter and we're going to come over here and we're going to type in these coordinates now mine already has stuff in there just ignore it so we're going to go ahead and type in negative four and then hit enter negative two enter and so on All right, now that you should have all of the numbers entered, um, we are going to go ahead and just hit graph. And as you can see, I'll make it big, as you can see, all those coordinates we just put in are here on the graph. Now, when the x coordinates, like we said, can never repeat. So we have something called a vertical line test. That means if I drew, just like the red line, a vertical line for each one of these points, my lines are not very straight, my red line should never go through one of these points more than one time. So therefore, this is a, um, a function because my red line never touched more than one point at a time. And I can see that as well by looking at my L1, which is my X um, coordinates, and notice that none of my X's ever repeat. So again, called the vertical line test. So if I looked at this one, is this graph or this table a function? Well, let's look at my x values. Do any of them repeat? Well, right away, I see a negative 4 and a negative 4. Therefore, if it looked like a map, if I had a negative 4, it means I would have one coming here and one going there. So my x is repeat. So no, this is not a function. And if you looked at it from a table, you will see. Um, you would see that that coordinate so if I had a table drawn and I had x at negative 4 I would have a dot up here at 6 and I would have a dot down here at negative 5 so if I drew my vertical line test notice it went through two points at the same time so therefore it would not pass the vertical line test All right, so let's go ahead and put these points, same points that we just did into our graphing calculator again. You can pause here to go ahead and enter them and then just click play when you're ready. 
once you enter them in, it looks like this. And again, if I looked at negative four, where X, we said that was R1 that repeated, right here is negative four. So if I drew a vertical line through negative four, it's touching two points. So therefore, it is not a function. So let's look at this question really quickly. Um, so which of the following represents a functional relationship? So let's look at A. Do any of those X's repeat? No, they don't. So A is a function. Let's look at B. Do any of these X's repeat? Remember, we're not worried about the Y's, only the X's. Yep, I see a negative three and a negative three. So this is not a function. And then C. Do my x's repeat? Well, yes, that's pretty easy to tell. So therefore, not a function. And remember, you can always graph these into your calculator and do the vertical line test to double check yourself. All right, which of the following represents a functional relationship? So remember, coordinates are always x and y and all the way down. So if I look at only my x's on a, Four, six, three, five. Do any of them repeat? They do not. So that's a function. B, four, five, four, five. They repeat. Not a function. C, negative seven, five, seven, ten. They do not repeat. Even though I see sevens, one's positive, one's negative. So that one is function. And again, you can graph these to double check yourself. <clears throat> Which of these following represents functional relationships? So if I look at these, well, if I look at A, so far it looks good up until right here. Notice my vertical line passes through three dots, therefore not a function. B, they, all my dots seem to look okay, so that one is a function. C, if I were to draw a vertical line right here, you can see that it crosses my line here and it crosses it there. So therefore, not a function. 